Hello friends, welcome to the another episode of Deep Body ECG. Assuming that this ECG is taken with normal standardization, let's calculate the rhythm. For that, you have to see lead two. So in lead two, what happens? There are P waves, QRS complexes, T waves. Every P wave is followed by QRS. Every P wave is followed by QRS. and the rr interval looks fairly regular 1 2 3 1 2 3 3 1/2 here also 3 1/2 here also 3 1/2 so it is quite regular so it is normal sinus rhythm after that we have to calculate rate 300 by number of big boxes between two r waves so it is around 1 2 3 3 1/2 4 so it's comes somewhere around 300 let's take it as 4 so it's come somewhere around 75 or approximately 80 after rate you have to calculate the axis for that you have to see lead 1 and avf in lead 1 qrs is predominantly up and lead avf predominantly down so there is left axis deviation that is <coughs> lead 1 it is going up lead wave it's going down that means one is going up one is going down both are leaving each other leaving each other l for l is left axis deviation so after that if you uh, you have to comment on waves p waves you see here p waves all are similar looking and uh, normal in nature and after that you have to see qrs complex what happened to qrs complex here you see hmm? there is um especially here in lead one it's very common it's very prominent here there is slurred upstroke of initial part of the q wave see here look at here there is slurred upstroke of initial part of the q wave q wave s see it has gone like this so it, they are called as delta waves these are called as delta waves and they are seen in wp w syndrome and see look at what happened here pair interval it's only two boxes so it is reduced 80 milliseconds which is less than 120 milliseconds so it is reduced <coughs> so i look at the stt wave changes they are discordant to delta waves if delta wave is positive stt wave changes are negative that means opposite so combination of short pair interval delta waves and discordant discordant stt wave changes are seen in wpw syndrome once you diagnose it as wpw syndrome you have to localize the bypass tract how to localize that bypass tract whether it is on the right side or left side for that you have to see lead v1 see in this lead v1 delta wave is negative so negative means it is the bypass tract is located on the right side if it would if it was positive it would have been on left side so here it is right side because delta wave is negative so once it is right side you have to calculate whether it is i mean you have to know whether you have to look at whether it is uh, left uh, sorry right uh, free ventricular wall or right posterior septal or right anterior septal for that you have to see 2 3 avf in 2 3 avf what happened the delta waves are predominantly negative see so delta waves are negative so negative means posterior septal so it is wpw syndrome with tract that is accessory pathway being on right right posterior septal so this is the diagnosis here wpw syndrome with bypass tract being on right posterior septal hope you got this information useful and if you like this video please like share and subscribe thank you